want to thank the candidates for coming tonight. We want to thank all of you for coming tonight. So we will start with two-minute opening statements from all of the candidates, and we'll go alphabetically, and then we'll be going back and forth so that nobody has to start first all the time. So we'll start with um, Ralph Hamlin. I'm seeking re-election as uh, your Canton Alderman. And two years ago, when I ran for this seat, I asked citizens what they wanted from me. Primarily, these were economic development and revitalization of the downtown and more businesses relocating to Canton. I listened, and we made progress. And people have noticed. Uh, news organizations have taken notice as well. A recent news publication states, Canton's vision of economic re renewal is resonating with business interest. This article refers to our incentives, including our recently passed commercial building maintenance ordinance. Business owner and property developer, Chris May, a man whose opinion I deeply respect, argues that he has seen changes in Canton the board is needing in new strategies to attract new investments. Once again, as a member of this current board, which includes my colleague, Gail Mull, listened to the people. We set a vision. Canton is Western North Carolina's hometown. We received positive support from the people and the press uh, supporting our Labor Day Festival as part of the vision which was months in planning to showcase our town to the citizens, to the region, to the state. We took a risk. Headlines from the Waynesville Mountaineer stated, Canton hits a home run on Labor Day. Another headline, Festival Gamble Pays Off. The Asheville Citizen Time posed to its readers not only because of the successful Labor Day Festival, but because of uh, the other initiatives we're taking the question is Canton, Western North Carolina's next boom town. Anyone running for this office should be asked, what will you do for Canton? I know my record and that of Miss Mullis. That answers our question. If we are reelected, I assure you that positive change will continue. Miss McCracken. I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Neil McCracken. A lot of people don't know me here, so I'm gonna, I was raised in Bethel and uh, li uh, raised in, uh, lived in Clyde for 21 years, which I worked with scouts and the uh, uh, football programs. I moved here to Canton for the last 20 years. I've been here, and I've been trying to improve our town for the last 20 years. I've worked hard to bring businesses downtown I, for I don't know if a lot of you don't remember this, maybe some of you are older, but we did have an antique fair downtown Canton, which brought hundreds of people downtown. We had people from uh, Tennessee, Gatlinburg, and it really worked out good. I think we had more people downtown and work, walking down the streets than we ever had. Uh, I also was sitting on the street one day at Christmas, and we had a talk with uh, to what we could do to do our town. And I said, let's have a tomato festival. So I suggested we have one. So we got a group together called Focus. It's a small group, and we put on a tomato festival. And after 10 years, it grew from a few people to about 20,000 people coming into the town on the weekends. And I think that was a great thing. Now, my, my suggestion is for the town, we have to work with businesses to get some businesses downtown. We have to work with business owners. We have to work with me being a building owner myself. I know how hard it is to to work on the buildings, and we have to do things to help the building owners get their buildings straightened out. So we, that's the main thing we're going to have to do. That will get our people in town, on the streets, and that's what it takes. Thank you. My name is Gail Mall, and I have been an alderman 
along with Ralph, Carol Edwards, Zeb Smathers, <coughs> for the past two years. That time has passed very quickly. Canton is faced with challenges that are common to most small towns in Haywood County and even in the entire state of North Carolina. There's never enough money to complete every project that needs to be done, so it's always a balancing act. We've given our town employees a raise while we have been aldermen. We did not raise our citizens' taxes. We have made plans for the future of our young people with the new swimming pool complex that we have proposed. We have made progress in our economic development initiative by revising our building and planning ordinance. We have taken steps to improve our aging infrastructure by replacing our water meters and we have just had the best Labor Day celebration in recent memory. But there's so much more that needs to be done. Ralph Hamlet and I are asking you, the citizens of Canton, for the chance to finish what we have started. Thank you all. Um, I should note that we have one other candidate, uh, Kay Brown. She called me on Thursday and said that um, she had a class that she teaches at Haywood Community College and would not uh, be attending. I was hoping maybe she could make other arrangements and be here instead, but um, I guess she's at her class. So um, we will just go ahead with the three and we'll start with our questions. We will have 90 seconds to answer each question and let's do be respectful of the timekeeper. And when the time, when it flashes red, uh, I'll just have to be enforcing that we stop. So well, the first question, and we'll start with you, Ms. Ma, yes. and it will be, why are you running for alderman, and what do you hope to accomplish during your tenure? Thank you. The reason, this sounds like the Miss America contest, doesn't it? Uh, the reason I'm running is because, uh, like Ralph, like Neil, I was born and raised in Canton, actually Dutch Cove. And, you know, while I have memories of what Canton was in, in when I was young, I hope that we can make Canton something that we can be proud of. Not that we're not proud of it now, but to make it more than it is. I'm not saying go back to the glory days. You can't ever go backwards, but we're going forward. We're going forward. And I think that our record for the past two years has shown that we have that push. We have the ideas, uh, we, have, we have the initiative, we have the town manager to lead us, and I think that that is something that we can all work together, and as long as we do that, I think Canton's future is going to be very, very bright, and I hope that I will be a part of it. Well, the reason I'm running for the elections is because I live in town and I love this town. And I have worked terribly hard for the last 20 years to just to bring people downtown and businesses downtown. And I think, I think we're on the right track with economic development, with this new group of people that's coming in. I hope they do a great job of, of showing us what we need to do with our town and, and I hope they bring in some showing us some new businesses that they can bring in. We have, it just takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of people working together to, uh, to make a town. And that's, that's one of my main goals is to build this town up and to get businesses. And I think I can work with business owners. I've worked with groups with the uh, downtown association. I've been to a lot of their meetings and I've been, I know a lot of building owners that I work with since I own a building and I know their problems. And I hope it will work real well. But uh, I just love this town. We have a, we have some great resources. We have I-40. We have a beautiful river right here to uh, be uh, involved in. We need to work on it. We have a uh, another place for another park down here on Mears Avenue. We need, I mean, for on the, and we need to really work on doing this and bring other things together. Thank you. I'm running for Alderman because <laughs> I've said this before. I've got a debt to pay back. Uh, I was raised here. I missed her. 
you taught me in school. And probably right now you're saying, I wish I'd taught him better. <laughs> but my wife and I, I was teaching at the University of North Texas. Uh, we decided to come back home, my home, to Canton, uh, be with my dad uh, last year of his life. And it was something in the water, I think, because uh, uh, a couple of days after my father had passed, uh, our daughter was born. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, Suzanne. Um, I'm proud of this town not only for me, but I'm proud of it because my daughters are here and they're enjoying the life that I enjoy. But I know our town can be better for them. Hopefully, one of these days, their children. Because this town is good. This town offers people hope and this town <coughs> is nurturing. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Mr. Hamlet, you get uh, to start on the second one. Uh, what role do you believe a town alderman can play in building a better community? A town uh, alderman, according to our charter, works with the other Alderman on the board. Um, and according to our charter, the description of the town, we have uh, a, a system with, with, with the Alderman together macro manages the town. And notice I say macro manage, not macro. That's up to the town manager. But we set the vision. We determine the course. We have a plan in place, which is what we've done. Now, the Alderman should collaborate. And I, I'm proud to say that most of what we have done in these last two years has been collaboration. If not collaboration, compromise. Very few times has it been competition. It should be collaboration to make our town better, to determine policies which guarantee us a future, to make sure that our financial house is in order and that we're safe in our homes. That's what all of do. <laughs> Well, I haven't been an alderman, but I really want to be because I think that I can do the job with working with each one of the, everyone here, it's going to be, I think I can do the job with working with the mayor, the town manager, with Seth, and I think that uh, that's what it really takes is working together with each one of us and making a difference. We have to improve everything that we do. We have to work on our water system. We have to work on our uh, sewer system, we have to work on building our downtown. We have to do a lot of things it takes to be an alderman. And, and I've been to a lot of meetings. I try to go to at least 75 of the meetings I've been to in the last few years. And you just have to work together. And it takes each and every one of us working together to be a great alderman. And uh, that's my stand on it. Thank you. Of course, we can depend on Ralph to give us the textbook <laughs> version of this. So my, I'll, I will give you the uh, unabridged. But I think the role of an alderman is to listen, to listen to the community. It's not our way or the highway. It is not our opinion that matters. We are fed by the community, by the citizens who elected us. By listening, we can find out what the problems are. My problems may not be your problems. Ralph's problems, Neil's problems, but it is the majority who rules. And by listening to everyone, taking note, 
We're not going to please everyone. We're not going to make everyone happy. And we know that because that's not humanly possible. But listening, we need to listen to the town. We need to listen to see what the needs are. And we need to do our very best to fulfill those. Thank you. Now, this next question is, is two-part. It's one for the incumbents and one for the challengers. And we'll start with you, Ms. Mall. Uh, during your tenure, what do you classify as the board's biggest accomplishment that you helped to lead? Well, I know that uh, we, uh, it goes against the grain to blow your own horn. But uh, I think as aldermen, we have, we have had a lot of pluses. We have had a lot of successes. We've had our share of failures. But the one thing that uh, I, I am proud of, and uh, I don't know if it's the most important thing, but there was money in this year's budget to give the alderman and the mayor uh, a yearly stipend. In case you don't realize it, we, we don't get paid. Uh, we get no salary. So I, I made the motion that we put that money in an economic development account that Mayor Ray had suggested that we set up because, and the other aldermen agreed with me, that Canton's future depends on attracting new businesses. And the economic development is the only way we have to do that. If we can't make the downtown a magnet for commerce, if we can't get people on the street, then we haven't succeeded. And it wasn't you know, a great deal of money, but I think it was more the gesture than anything else. Thank you. And, and so for you, Ms. McCracken, if elected, what issue would you most like to be known for spearheading and how would you go about accomplishing it? Well, I think the, the biggest thing we need to do is work on our buildings, improving our buildings downtown. We got to get them to looking good and getting building owners to realize that we have you can't put a business into a building that looks like trash. We have to do fix that. And I think that's one of my biggest conscious and I think I can work with some building owners because I, I do own a building and I know what the problems are about that. Uh, economic, I think yes, we need to get people downtown. I think uh, one of the things we really have a problem with is speeding in our town. And the, I think we, our police department's done everything that's possible. And the only way that we're going to slow traffic down is to put businesses in this town and people can stop and look and put people on the streets, that will slow the traffic down. And that's, that's the, I think that's probably the only way we're going to be able to do this. And it's, that's, that's my opinion on the town. Thank you. Would you want me to repeat the question, Mr. Hamlet? Sure. That for the incumbents, during your tenure, what do you classify as the board's biggest accomplishment that you helped to lead? Yes. No, it's easy. <laughs> many come to mind. There, there's so many things that we have done. Uh, but one that I think all of us are proud of, and I'm proud of, and it deals with money again. <coughs> For our staff, which has built morale in this town. We provided a pay increase on this budget. Uh, to the town employees for the first time since 1996. And we conducted a study before we did that to find out how what we needed to do to bring town employees to a comparable wage level of other people in other municipalities. And this was the first time a comprehensive study had been done since 1996. And we gave uh, actually, they earned, finally, a living wage. And I'm so proud of that. To have an employee come up and say thank you 
And every one of us board members, every one of us, have heard that. Because you know what makes this town great? It's not us. It's the people from the police force, the firefighter, the street worker, everyone that makes this town great. Okay, now you don't have to relinquish the podium because you get to start again. <laughs> and the question is, uh, what would you like Canton voters to know about the town's budget? Okay. When, when, when I first became an alderman, I had a concern. <laughs> And it scared me, actually. It was about the fund balance. Um, and as a matter of fact, during the uh, position interview for the uh, uh, town manager, this was mentioned by a couple of the candidates. Fund balance. Um, it was about 43% when we came into office in 2013. Now, the state level is, the requirement is at 8%. So 43% sounds pretty good. But it's really not. It's of concern. It's how much, it, the, the, really, the, the money for the pool that she talked about, we're gonna have fall money to pay for that. We are. We'll seek grants, but it, 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 we're gonna have to borrow some money. And our fund balance allows us to do that. Right now, this fund balance that I was so concerned about has been raised by $400,000. Money that we saved elsewhere and put into the fund balance. And our fund balance has raised 7%. It is now roughly 50%. What was it exactly? Oh. Uh, what is it that you would like Canton voters to know about the town's budget? I, you know, I'm with Ralph, I think I think everybody should know exactly what we're doing with our spending our money in the town. If we're spending it on swimming pools or anything else, which we are going to have to borrow money to do, I know Ralph. Everybody knows that, and we need to uh, we need to work on making sure that everybody in the town knows what we're spending our money for, and and asking them what we really need to do to improve our budget. You know, we need we need to we need to work on that problem. I, I haven't been involved in the budget yet, so I'm looking forward to it. So we we'll just see how that goes. I think that uh, the word that we're looking for here is transparency. A budget is like everything else. It shouldn't be conducted in secret, uh, you know, double bookkeeping and all that. I think transparency. The town has a right to know what the budget is. And this year, one reason our budget is in such good shape is because of the health care. Uh, the town employees went out, found a health care program system that is going to save $200,000 for the town with comparable insurance. And while at first you can imagine the town employees weren't that eager as none of us are, no one likes change, but I think that they, you know, now would agree that health care is something that is never going down and it's never going away. You always need it no matter how old you are. But by, by saving that $200,000, we have a very healthy fund balance. And it, we, we have worked very hard at that. And, you know, if you want to know more about the budget, come to the alderman meeting because we discuss it quite frequently. Um, the problems with the Canton Pool have been discussed for years. Are you comfortable with the direction that the board is moving? Uh, why or why not? And we'll start with you. 
I think that uh, we have said this over and over, so if you've heard this part, just to close your ears, but one of the things that most of us ran on and call it a campaign promise or platform or whatever was the Canton Pool. We all have memories of that. Some of our memories are older than others. My children, my grandchildren, and so in some form or fashion, I think this board was determined to re renovate, redo the pool. To what extent is to yet be determined. It will depend on how much money we have and what it costs. We will build what we can afford. But I think that we're all in agreement on the alderman and I think from what we've heard from the town, we need a new pool. That's something for our young people. We have very little that attracts them as it is and that is something that we have fought very hard for and we're looking forward to seeing it come to fruition. Well, we have the only outside pool in the Haywood County, and that's, I mean, that says something right there. We, I know our pool has really gotten bad shape. I know my son was a lifeguard several years ago, and it was, it was bad shape then. We need to, we definitely need a new pool. I, I know it's going to be expensive, but we have to find a way. I think. I think we've been over looking at different views and looking at different types of ways to go, and I think our, our board's are doing a good job on it. I think Seth's doing a good job. I think everybody is on the same track that we got to have a pool and going to be a good and nice pool, it's something that we, this town can really be proud of. Thank you. Well, this has been a point of uh, the board focus since we came on the board. Uh, we've had a um, uh, work group to talk about the pool. Uh, we've met with consultants. We've seen renderings, uh, designs. Uh, hopefully, a design we can afford, including a lazy river, we hope. And the plan is currently to have shovels ready to go at the close of the next pool season. That's the hope. Now it means we're gonna to have to find the monies and uh, uh, locate grants, that's the best way to go. But probably borrowing money as well. But we've got to do this because the pool is such a large part of Canton, our heritage. Uh, kids enjoy it. It's a safe place to go. It's a good place to go. Our recreation park is marvelous. Uh, and, and this will be a major attraction for people wanting to relocate to our town, to bring their families so they can grow here, have a place to play, have a place to swim. Very important. And we're going to get it done. Thank you. And we'll start with you, Mr. Hamlet. Uh, economic development is an ongoing concern for most communities. What steps does Canton need to take in this area? The steps that we're taking. That's what we need to do. Because as I said in the opening, economic development, that was the message that I heard and we listened to. So when our feet hit the ground, it was economic development. And we've met, we've had work sessions, asking ourselves, what can we do? How can we attract people to our town? And you know what? It's what we've been doing. And it's paying off. We've had seven businesses come on our watch in the last two years. Uh, Kobe's, uh, uh, uh Tattoo on Main Street, the sc screen printing shop on Main and Adams, Dickie's Barbecue, the Imperial Restaurant, the new management there, Robin Black Accounting on Radio Hill, and Miss Tootin's Fat Bellies made possible 
by our food truck ordinance, another part of economic development, bringing businesses here. And we've got at least three businesses waiting to come to Canton. More news on that later. Canton is, but to quote Zeb, Zeb, open for business. Thank you. I worked with uh, North Carolina NC staff for several years. When we started the NC staff, we went to Raleigh and tried to get a grant to get the $25,000 grant. And we worked with, it was really hard to get that grant. And then we got a $100,000 grant. And we spent that money quite wisely. It took it, and North Carolina is really strict on how you spend this money. And I have, I know it is here, and it's a really hard thing to do. We, uh, we have to put our thoughts in our buildings and getting people interested in bringing businesses, good businesses, that will stay and not be a 90-day job or a three-month job. They got to be somebody that's going to be staying in these towns and wanting to invest their money. And that's, that's, that's the only way we're going to have a great economic development. We have to get these people and I hope this new uh, company that's coming in will help us do this because they say they're going to bring us, show us how to, to bring businesses in and show us new businesses. And I'm going to make them stick to that, I hope. As Neil and Ralph have both pointed out, we have done studies, I, I would say going back probably as far as 20 years, and we have done studies and we have had people come in. We have notebooks full of these studies that never, nothing ever came of it. This board, Ralph and I, are determined that it's going to come out of the book and it's going to be put into action. A plan is of no use whatsoever if you don't do something with it. It can be a wonderful plan. It can be a marvelous plan. It can be a perfect plan for Canton. But if you don't get out there and put it into effect, it's useless. And that is what we have determined that we are going to do. You don't lock a plan away. It has to be living, breathing, and usable. It can't, it can't be a perfect plan unless it works for Canton and unless we put it into action. And that's what we're determined to do. It's a long road. It will take a long time. Canton didn't get this way overnight. It will not be fixed overnight. And it, but this long process, we are determined to stick it out. We have the perseverance, we have the stamina, and we're going to make it work. Thank you. And we get to start with this next question. Uh, talk about Lake Logan and the implications it has for the future of Canton. Lake Logan. I'm, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I'm at Camp Hope. I'm at Camp Hope. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote these when, after I was finishing with the paper. Well, I'm I, I was at Camp Hope. Okay. Uh, we have Pam Pierce here who uh, knows probably more about this subject than any of us. But as uh, uh, we said about the swimming pool, we all have memories of Camp Hope. We were all there as uh, children. I know that's hard to believe that we were children, but we were. But Camp Hope is our heritage. We are determined you know, to bring it around. Pam Pierce, Tracy O'Neill, they have worked very hard. Ralph and I are on the Camp Hope Commission and we meet regularly. We, you know, we, we realize the problems with it. And of course, we're not at liberty to discuss that, but we are determined. We are determined that Camp Hope is going to be part of our future and that it's going to be successful and it's going to be something that Canton will be able to brag about. Well, my son went to Camp Hope and he loved it. I mean, he spent every summer there, and I think it's one of the greatest things we have in, in our community. And I definitely are 100% for helping them grow and keeping it alive. We have to do this. It's just something that we, we're, we're just, 
have to do. I mean, it's, we don't have to let things go like that. I know we have a lot of problems with Camp Hope, and I know we spent a lot of money just to keep the entire, but I think we, that's something that we definitely have needed to do. Camp Hope is one of Kenton's treasures. Every day on my drive over to Brevard College, I go over the mountain. I pass the camp. And I'm a squishy person. I've known you said that you've been. I know. Um, <clears throat> I stop sometimes and look and remember. I remember people who have long passed. I remember me as a boy. The same memories you probably have. You can tell what Camp Hope means to me. And with all the power in my being, I will fight to make sure that Camp Hope is Canton. It's important. It's ours. It's what we're about. It's our childhood. It's our memory. Okay, this is the last question, the one that Faith and I just came up with. Uh, I want you to think ahead 10 years from now. Faith and her other seniors have uh, gone off and gotten educated and they've seen the world and they've decided Canton is where they want to come home to. What will there be here in Canton for them to come home to 10 years from now? Wow. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Faith. <laughs> you know, I, I think about this. And it's a very good question. My daughters, I would love for them to come back to Canton. I hope it isn't uh, 10 years from now. I hope it's when they graduate college. Uh, Suzanne enjoys doing art. I hope she can do art in Canton. My other daughter enjoys writing. I hope she can write in Canton. What, the, what I want for them is a Canton which is better than it was for me and all of us. Not to say what we had was bad, but everything can be better with work. A Canton that is not the same as it was for me, but a Canton which has the sameness for them that it had for me a place that they want to be, a place that they want to raise their children and live their lives and have teachers like Miss Church. <laughs> I want a Canton, which is better because of what we've done for my daughter. My son lives in California, and I would love to see him come back to in the next few years, but that's probably not going to happen. But I love to see things grow in Canton, to bring where our kids do not have to leave to have a wonderful place to come to, you know, to have something that the class, the schools, and the economic development we can, we can provide for them. and. It's just something that we need to work on and improve on. We have such a wonderful place to live for. We have the beautiful mountains. We have the Blue Ridge Parkway. We have our rivers here. And this is something that I, I know that young people will really enjoy being here in Canada. <coughs>
And I think this this needs to just keep growing and growing and growing. And every 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 step that we can take to help it grow is a step that we need to take. I love Canton and I want to see our young people stay here. I have two grown sons, and when I say grown, I mean old. And they both live in Canton. And I'm very fortunate to have two grandchildren who are 9 and 13. And so you might say I have a dog in this fight. Because the economic development we are planning is not just focused on my grandchildren, but y'all's grandchildren, your children. And that, that is why we work so hard. That's why we are so determined. Ralph keeps saying that Anita Churn was his teacher. Bill Stamey was mine, so I'm a lot older than him. But the fact of the matter is that we want to make Canton better. It will be different from our memories. It will not be the same. We all know that. We don't want it to be the same, but we want it to be better. And by being better, we can go in different directions. The next generation is not like my children don't want the same things I want. My grandchildren do not want the same things that their parents want. But the thing about Canton is we're, we have the most beautiful location in town. We are here because of the mill, not in spite of it. And we're very lucky to have this paper mill in the midst of Canton because most of us have either worked there or knew someone who did. But the future can be bright, and we hope that if we work hard enough, it will be. So we have now reached our time for our closing statements. A big sigh of relief, I guess. Uh, three minutes, and we'll start with you, Mrs. Mara. I'll take a very short time and leave the rest to Ralph and Neil, but accountability is a word that we hear on a daily basis, especially if you watch television, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, it's all about accountability. Well, Ralph and I take our res alderman responsibility very seriously because we are accountable to the citizens of Canton. You all elected us and we are very serious about this. And we have a vision, a vision for the future of Canton. The past two years have been a very positive time for our town, but we're hoping that the best is yet to come. And we ask for your vote. We want four more years to keep this momentum going. We feel we're going in the right direction, and we need your help to keep that in motion. Thank you. Well, I love this town, and I'm, st I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can to bring s something to this town that it hasn't been brought to in a long time. I want, I want to see this town grow. I want to see our, our uh, corridors on I-40 grow. I want to see it. 1923, we have a great place down through that area. It's not even been developed hardly any. We need to work on that. I think we need to work on it. We, like I'm telling you before, we need to work on our buildings. We need to work on bringing good businesses downtown. We get, we have to get these people downtown, get people on the streets, and get get people to realize that we have a town. This is a town, and we instead of just driving through it and not even looking at what we have to offer, from, we got to get things going. I promise you, I. I, I will, if I'm elected, I will work just as hard as I possibly can to do this. And if I'm not elected, I'll work just as hard to do this. So it doesn't matter to me one way or the other, but I do think I can do a good job. I've, I've worked with a lot of, of different things in this town. With I'm on the ABC board. I worked with NC staff. I worked with the Tomato Festival and the focus groups. And I, I think I've, I've done a fairly decent job of... Uh, working as hard as I possibly can, and I'm not, not going to stop. I'm going to be that far as town. And I love this town, and thank you. Let me start off. <laughs> Four score <squat> now. <laughs> I want to thank you. Every one of you for coming. Uh, 
<laughs> listening to our answers, thinking about it. What makes Canton great? You. <coughs> That's what it's about. So I want to thank you. And I want to thank my, my two associates up here, because this hasn't been easy. <laughs> um, Zeb, where are you? Ah, now Zeb, just stand one second, would you? Oh, now, Zeb. You only got three minutes. I know, I know. I'm, uh, Zeb, just stand for just a sec. Just stand up. Uh, Zeb said something. He says, Ralph, you're rather verbose. He said, you're like an airplane. You're like an airplane that circles the airstrip that never lands. Please, Ralph, make a point. Okay. I'm going to surprise you, Zeb, and Carol, and Mike. I raised a question in my opening comments, and I closed with a question. Is Canton better off than it was two years ago? Look at our record. If your answer is yes, re-elect Ralph Hammond and Gail Mull as Canton Alderman on November 3rd. Thank you. Well, thank you all. You've been very good sports. I appreciate you coming, and I appreciate all you coming. And um, again, tell your friends to watch the video. It'll be on our website, and watch for coverage in the Magnier. <laughs>